This is Brennan Davis from Bedrock Games and the Bedrock Blog, and today I'm going to be talking about a movie called Boxer's Omen. This is a 1983 Shaw Brothers release directed by Gui Chi Hong. Uh, he made a, a lot of really interesting sort of horror exploitation type movies and is um, very uh, known for his unusual visual elements. Um, I'm going to be reviewing more of his movies. I'll probably be doing Killer Constable uh, down the road and maybe Corpse Mania as well. But today we're doing Boxer's Omen. And Boxer's Omen is, I think, a really fun and interesting movie. It's, uh, I grew up on, uh, on, 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 like, 80s horror and gore films. So I, I saw a lot of movies as a kid and as a young man where, uh, where the point was to kind of gross out the audience to uh, different ways and, uh, and, and to do it in sort of an atmospheric and uh, horrifying way. This movie combines elements of a kung fu film with horror and that sort of gore and psychedelic uh, vibe. So it's really got it's got a lot of different things. There's even sort of a gangster element. It, it, there's a lot of different genres I think operating in this movie. The way I would describe the plot is, it's a bit like if you took Jean Claude Van Damme's Kickboxer and you threw in a bunch of black magic elements and and, and just basically made it a better movie. Um, but the, uh, the, the core plot is the, the hero is, is a gangster whose brother is a, um, a kickboxer and the brother ends up fighting a guy in Thailand, uh, in a Muay Thai match and, uh, the, the his opponents played by Bolo Young and, and the brother wins, but Bolo Young, you know, basically does something underhanded towards the end of the match and he ends up breaking the brother's neck. So the brother's paralyzed and, uh, and and so the main character has to uh, has to come to Thailand to get revenge for his brother, and he has all these visions of this Buddhist monk, who it turns out he was uh, the twin of in a in a previous life, and the uh, when he goes to uh, a Thai temple, he finds out that this monk has recently been killed by a by a sorcerer who uses black magic, and the monk was trying to achieve immortality and. Uh, couldn't because he died and so now um, the main character uh, needs to both get revenge for his brother in this life but also help his brother from a previous life deal with the uh, the black magic sorcerer and he gets involved in this whole spiritual struggle between um, not just the original sorcerer but a, but a whole group of them and they, they end up uh, uh, you know so, so he ends up having a, a, a duel with the uh, with, with the uh, the black magic sorcerer he wins and I'll get into sort of the details of that and why it's interesting uh, and after that uh, other uh, black magic sorcerers uh, you know resurrect a, a, a woman and use her as an instrument of, of, uh, of revenge against him and the monk and so the, there's this big climactic uh, finale in Nepal when the hero is trying to uh, get this ancient Buddhist artifact to help him deal with the final threat. Um, and there's also a couple of kickboxing matches in between. And there's even like a gangster fight early on. So there's, there's a lot going on in this movie. And I, I, I don't know, I like that. I, I, I think the fight scenes are very charming. They're not, they're not the greatest fight scenes in the world. The, the, the kickboxing scenes, they're good, but they kind of feel more like sort of in the Rocky realm to me. Um, and, and I like Rocky movies, but I think, you know, they're not, they're not known for their um, you know, realistic fight choreography. So it's kind of that, got a little bit more of that vibe going on in the uh, kickboxing scene. And then the, the, the gangster scene is really an excuse to introduce the, the monk and kind of explain the hero's backstory a little bit. But, but that's also pretty, um, you know, I don't know, I thought it was a pretty entertaining uh, action sequence as well. Uh, this movie, though, it, it sort of veers from psychedelic to gore to atmospheric horror to, to um, you know, to, to, to scenes where it's just about fighting in a, uh, a kickboxing match. So there's, there's, there's a lot going on in the movie, and it, uh, it, it's, it's visually kind of all over the place, but somehow it all works. It's a very strange... I, th I think it has a very strange uh, overall effect uh i don't want to i don't want to mischaracterize it if you, this this is made in 1983 some of the effects are very clearly dated some of the choices might seem questionable but just as somebody who grew up watching this kind of stuff 
I, I understand where, you know, like what, what the vibe was at the time and, and what they were, what they were trying to do. And I thought it was very effective. The gore was especially, um, especially impactful. I, I watch a lot of movies that have, you know, bloodshed and gore and I'm not phased by much. This movie, there were scenes I couldn't, I, I, I mean, I could watch them, but I, I got nauseous watching them, right? I had to, like, keep myself from thinking about the full implication of the scene just to, to not not want to gag. They, they were that, they, they, they were, it was that effective. And, and I think a lot of it has to do with the, the way that the black magic was done in this movie. They really emphasized... Uh, the, the sort of the, the the gory aspects of the casting process. So, and they used a lot of uh, a lot of scenes where people had to consume things in order to uh, to achieve some sort of magical effect. And the things that they had to consume were like raw chicken parts and um, you know other you know veg- uh, moldy vegetables and. Uh, at one point, somebody's even eating a durian fruit. I don't know if you're familiar with those, but uh, a lot of people actually like them. But durian have a very pungent aroma. Um, some people can't stomach them. The guy who did, um, I think the show was called Strange Foods. I might have the name wrong, but he went around the world and ate unusual foods. And durian fruit was something that he couldn't eat. And it seems to be one of those things. Some people just either like it, they don't mind it, and some people do. Just like, you know, we eat a lot of cheese and cheese doesn't bother us. But if you give cheese to somebody who's never had fermented dairy product, it's a, it's a very difficult thing to eat. Um, my wife loves durian fruit. I find this the, the smell a little too strong, uh, and I've never been able to marshal up the courage to eat it. Um, so I can't really comment. But the fact that they had somebody eating durian fruit as part of this ritual where they were trying to emphasize how, uh, you know, the, how, how, how uh, unappetizing the 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 components of these spells were um i th- i don't know that kind of it was number one it was kind of an interesting thing to throw in there but it uh it, it made me buy into the uh to the gore a little bit more um so there's a really there's a number of really difficult to watch scenes but but one of the big ones is when uh these three sorcerers who are trying to get back at the hero uh resurrect this sorceress by digging her up uh, digging, digging up her grave and then putting her body inside of a, um, like a gutted crocodile and sewing it back up. And then they start performing this spell and they have to, they have to eat all these disgusting foods, the, the, the raw chicken parts, the, the moldy fruit, the, um, the durian fruit, and they spit it up into a goop and then they have to put it in her mouth. And it, it's just a whole thing. Um, very difficult to watch, but very effective. And then she becomes, um, sort of the uh, uh, the big bad villain in the end. And, and she's kind of this, you know, she's sort of like a half-naked sorceress woman walking around with long, pointy fingernails. Um, I, I mean, it's, I, she's, uh, I think they use her in a lot of the posters for the movie, so uh, you'll, you'll get a sense if I post some links in the bottom. But um, uh, there's another scene where the hero has to have a, a spiritual duel with the first sorcerer, and just the stuff that the... The, the sorcerer is doing to perform his magic, the stuff he's eating, the stuff he's coughing up, the, you know, his head is getting pulled off of his body, and there's, it's, it's all kinds of, you know, interesting sort of gory aspects, and I, I don't know, I, I, I thought it was a fun movie. Uh, the part that I really liked was the way they dealt with the black magic, and, uh, you know, there's, there's, a, a, it, there's a movie called Black Magic that's also a Shaw Brothers film that's kind of similar in the way that it does this, but... Uh, it's really more about the spiritual struggle between the the monk and the sorcerer and it's not about them like walking up to each other and fighting or casting spells at each other it seems like they're kind of performing these in their respective you know locations that are separate and 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 even though on screen we see them facing off they're really sort of having a spiritual battle and i just thought that was interesting it um you know, as a gamer, when I see stuff like that, that gives me kind of a lot of cool ideas uh, for incorporating magic into my games. And so uh, so I just thought that was a, 
uh, the way that they did it worked. It, it, it was, it, it, you know, it, there is in fact like a um, an actual physical confrontation at the end of the movie between the hero and the um, the the sorceress, but but most of the most of the magical combat is is this sorcerer performing his ritual over here and the uh, um, the monk performing his ritual over here and uh, you know it is very interestingly done. Uh, but again, very gory. I usually have a fairly easy time watching this stuff, and I, 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 uh, I, I, I really uh, found myself, uh, you know, I, I, I was getting nauseous watching some of these scenes. Um, so again, it's Boxer's Omen. Uh, it's an '83 Shaw Brothers release. This is towards the end of Shaw Brothers, so they're really doing all kinds of wild and crazy stuff. And this director, he's he was known for this sort of thing, and this this really kind of captures uh, a lot of his style. Uh, there's another movie, uh, you know, you might as well sort of talk about these other ones that I was I was thinking of reviewing, but decided not to. Uh, Hex, uh, which is also by the same director, um, gets into the, some of the same territory, but in in a lot of ways is kind of uh, more interesting. It's a um, uh, a remake of Diabolique, but it's done in sort of a Hong Kong uh, Shaw Brothers style. And uh, it's got some really interesting moments in it. And, um, you know, I, I really enjoyed that movie. But I, I decided not to do a review. I decided to review uh, Boxer's Omen instead. And another one that's more in the wuxia realm that's worth checking out is uh, The Bride from Hell. This is more of a classic ghost story uh, where a scholar ends up marrying a woman who turns out to be a ghost who's possessing a woman. And then he finds out that um, his... Uh, uh, that, that all the people in his social circle, many of them, were responsible for this woman's uh, really brutal demise, and she now wants revenge. So uh, I, I really enjoyed that movie. I may still give it a, a review of its own, but um, uh, I, I just it, it, it's just sort of a fun ghost movie. I didn't really have a whole lot to say about it beyond that. Um, but Boxer's Omen, I. I I'm not going to recommend Boxer's Omen to everybody. I think if you don't like gore, you will not like this. If you're the kind of person that likes gore, if you like stuff like The Reanimator and uh, Dead Alive and um, Evil Dead, stuff like that, if you like the sort of ex- exploitation horror that Shaw Brothers was doing, um, you know, then, then this is maybe for you. Uh, it's definitely a strange movie. It's got a very unusual aesthetic. The, there are moments in the movie that are beautiful. There are moments in the um, in the Buddhist temple that just look gorgeous, and then it gets into just like real graphic, uh, um, gory scenes. There's there's a lot of you know just sort of like the, you know nudity, sex, uh, you know every they kind of throw everything in a blender and 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 and, and serve it to you. Uh, but but I think it's I think it's an enjoyable movie, and it's it's got a lot of um, a lot of energy to it. it, it you know you. <laughs> it's just kind of firing on all cylinders, so, so you know it's worth checking out. Uh, again, it's not it's not a wuxia movie. It's not really even a kung fu movie. It's more of a blend of horror with a bit of martial arts and some gangsters, and uh, you know that isn't gonna be for everybody. And and Shaw Brothers horror, especially at this time, um, for some people, I think it's an acquired taste. I grew up watching stuff in the '80s, so I find it fairly easy. To, to accept a lot of the stuff that appears on screen. But I suspect younger people watching this might not react the same way to some of the special effects because these are sort of pre-CG special effects and they're, um, they're not always very realistic looking. Um, but, but definitely some unusual visuals in this one. So, uh, so again, Boxer's Omen, 1983, Shaw Brothers. Uh, check it out. I think you can still get it. I don't know. Some of these movies are getting harder and harder to find. Um, hopefully there'll be, uh, you know, the, uh, movies like this will stay available on DVD, but I have noticed some of them are harder to get. Uh, I'll buy a movie for 15 bucks. And then when I go to check it out a year or two later, it's like a hundred and then sometimes even more. Um, I have noticed, um, I'm probably gonna do a whole video on this, but Amazon has just been kicking ass with Shaw Brothers on on its um, streaming service. If you go on to Prime, if you have Prime, they have a ton of Shaw Brothers uh, like Kung Fu and Wuxia movies. Uh, so so I don't believe this is on there, but I know they have Black Magic. They have a bunch of uh, um, 
they have they have a lot of really great uh, classic Shaw Brothers films. Uh, way more than Amazon. Way way more than Amazon. So so these days I I tell everybody to get Prime if they're interested in watching Shaw Brothers because they just seem to have an epic ton of Shaw Brothers film on uh, on Netflix. I find I'm kind of sifting through the the dozen or so movies that they seem to have. Maybe they got like two or three dozen, but it's not. It's not a full library like Amazon has at this time. These things are always changing. But, um, but yeah, so, uh, you know, nothing to do with the review, but uh, if, if you're liking these reviews, if you like these kind of movies, check out Amazon Prime because I've, I've been really impressed with their selection. And a lot of times, even when I have it on DVD, I just watch it on Amazon Prime because it's easier because I got my, uh, my iPad and it's just easier than putting the DVD in. So, all right, I will talk to you later, and until then, have a great day.